apart from you, Lord, we are nothing, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you for dying on that cross to save our lives, O oh God. Thank you for your unending love to us. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that are coming. Lord, ingatan mo po sila na makarating sila sa yung church, safe and sound, O oh God. We believe, O oh God, that you are the one calling us here to come, to gather, and to worship you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you gave us, Panginoon. Lord, we want to give you high. We want to give you praises. Hallelujah. This I pray in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of Psalms 104, 33, it says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. And in Psalm 63, verse 5, it says, With my singing lips, my mouth will praise Him. Church, we have a singing faith. And God has given us the gift of music to praise Him. God doesn't require us na maganda yung boses natin para pasalamatan at para purihin siya. All He needs all he wants is our hearts. So let's offer our endless praise to our God.
So let's continue to sing our worship for God, for He is the kingdom.
Let's open our hearts this afternoon. Let's serve this song as a fellowship to our God, to our King of Kings, and to our Lord of Lords. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, 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 my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing.
strength is failing. The end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise Never be defeated, for you were the 
the church and sing to our God. Hallelujah.
friends. Praise the Lord. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Praise the Lord. Pakibati huli ang katabi mo ng may sigla. Magandang hapon kapatid. Praise God. Bagamat ang panahon natin is really gloomy because of the changes in the weather, but we still believe that it's a time for us to be able to uh, be rejoicing and excited because God has given us this wonderful day to be able to rest and at the same time worship Him. So, samahan niyo po as we come to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come and recognize that whatever we are, we have gone through and we're going through right now, that we have been promised that we shall overcome because the Lord Jesus Christ is indeed our overcomer. Salamat Panginoon dahil sa katagumpayan niya, ano man ang aming dinadaanan, we can be assured that there will be always be victory in our lives. We hold on to the truth of God for what the Lord Jesus Christ has given us and has done for us. So right now, as we come and listen to your word, Panginoon, ang hiling po namin that your Holy Spirit will be our teacher, na siya mangunguna sa amin, Panginoon, mangungusap sa amin ang iyong salita. So we humble ourselves before you right now once more. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Panginoon, let this be a time that will indeed be encouraged, strengthened, and be corrected by your word so that we may continue to grow in our relationship with you. We commit this time to you, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit now speak to us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This year, we have been challenged by the Lord to be able to move on in spite of the last year's uh, transitions sa mga buhay na marami sa ating mga kapatid, especially in our church, that many had moved to another place, marami na rin nag-retire. But the Lord is good. He enabled us to stand firm, but also uh, not just to survive the situation, but continue on sa ating pagsunod sa Kanya. Because it is God's desire that we'll grow and we'll advance and we'll move on. In fact, I've shared to you that siguro lahat tayo is desiring to be able to advance and progress in our lives. Wala sigurong nangarap na umatras siya o may stuck siya sa buhay na meron siya. In different areas of life, gusto natin laging umuusad. We always want to advance. We always want to progress. May it be in technology, in our finances, kahit sa ating career, or even in a relationship. We always want to move on and to advance. Um, just this morning when we are having our meeting and uh, we are discussing about the changes in the, di- in the technology that we have right now. I don't know if you're aware that the 5G technology is now being introduced uh, sa, sa mundong ito. The 5G technology is now being used by some of the nations and somehow medyo naambuna na po tayo niyan. Ano, ano tong 5G technology? This is the latest generation uh, and technology na kung saan mas lalong pina-advance yung ating sistema ng komunikasyon. Especially in mobile communications. Okay? Uh, nanggaling yan, of course, dun sa tinatawag nating uh, uh, meron pang first generation, second generation, third generation, and fourth generation. Then we are coming up with a fifth generation. Ano ba tong genera- ano, ano tong 5G technology na to? This is actually designed to perform uh, yung ating communication on a high speed level, more speed. Uh, ang data rate niya, ay sinasabi dyan, it will be 1,000 times. So now you can connect your devices sa mga Wi-Fi, not just yung nag-aalala tayo na kapag merong isang gagamit o dalawa o tatlo, is medyo babagal na. This time, the 5G technology can accommodate 10 times to 100 times of connected devices. Okay? So, pwede siyang sabay-sabay, kahit manood ka ng video dyan, ng YouTube dyan, 
it will not affect the the the, the, the uh, rate ng yung panunood okay and it, it, this is very cost uh sabi nating energy energy saving when it comes to sa mga paggamit ng energy so marami rin po diyan nagsasabi that this uh, technology will give us a uh, reduce yung ating cost ng binabayaran which is really happening right now uh, nung nagpa uh, ad- connect kami sa this lot for another contract this time it's more cheaper than before previously that we're using and more faster so it's really a benefit sa marami especially now that we're using uh, more sa, sa atin ng internet okay so malaki rin yung capacity niya sabi diyan it's 10 times battery life lal na sa mga power devices. Okay. So, it started, alam natin, doon sa tinatawag na first generation. Ang speed down niyan is 2.4 kilobytes pa. Okay. Then, it moved to second generation in 1990. Now, it moved to 64 kilobytes. Then, it went to 3G in 2003. This time, it's 2 megabytes. And after that 2003, the 2009 we're using the fourth generation technology with 100 Mbps as the uh, maximum rate. But the 5G is now introducing the one gigabyte, so 10 times more. Okay, kaya yung standard, especially in UAE that's being used for the minimum user is the 100 Mbps. Can you imagine that this one gigabyte, 10 times? Sa Pilipinas, by the way, Nandun pa rin tayo sa tinatawag na 2003. 2 Mbps. At minsan, wala pa yung tamang rate. Okay? Can you imagine? While we are enjoying the 5G right now, they're still in the 3G, kaya naman pa na complain ng maririnig. But, sino ba may gusto to stay dun sa ganung kalagay? To be stuck in, in, in the kind of technologies that they're using right now? Wala po. Everybody wants to be advancing and progressing, especially in the te- technology that we're using right now. But hindi lang yan sa aspeto na yon sa ating mga gamit devices. We also want to advance ating buhay sa ating career. That's why in 2016, there's this guy who became famous because he passed the bar exam being a janitor. He became a lawyer. He passed the 2016 bar exam. Isa lang siyang janitor, 35 years old, the name is Ramil Comendador. Nung una niyang hinanap yung kanyang pangalan, sa sobrang tense niya, hindi niya nakita, umiyak po siya, sabi niya, I failed. But later on, when it was given to him, nandun pala yung pangalan niya, and so nagtatalo siya, and he said, I passed the exam. So he was uh, recognized as the janitor who is now a lawyer. Why? He wanted to advance and to progress sa kanyang career, not just to stay as a janitor, he became a lawyer. So even in our career, we would like to advance. Nobody wants to stay sa buhay na dati natin, na nakasanayan o pinanggalingan. This church is so blessed with a new generation of babies. And we're excited to see them starting to crow, starting to sit and run and walk. At hindi lang ho yan, nakikita natin mabilis nilang paglaki. Ang dami natin mga babies dito na naging uh, malilit ng chikting. Di ba? At nakakatuwa sila dahil pag nagsama-sama sila, makikita mo iba't ibang personalidad. Merong isang tahimik, merong isang napakatapang, merong laki sa UAE na bully, merong ng babato. May exciting yung, yung mga bata. We're excited to see how they will grow. We're excited that they're advancing in their life as, ki- uh, 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 as children. And they're growing fast. Bago matuklas yan, later on, nag-aaral na yan. Still remember, I think three years or four years ago, na yung mga nag-aaral natin mga youth sa, sa, sa Pilipinas right now has been just singing here and doing their concert as kids. And now, they are there studying in their college uh, sa Pilipinas. And who know? Later on, uh, yung mga susunod natin mga bata ngayon, napakabilis niyan, susunod din sa yapak ng ating mga anak sa Pilipinas because they're growing fast. So also in our faith journey, God wants us to move on, to advance. Hindi lang sa aspeto ng ating karit. 
Kung merong nagnanais na mag sa buhay na ito, is none other than God. That's the reason why ang faith journey natin, mga kapatid, remember where we came from, Ephesians will tell you how God is advancing us and leading us into our faith journey. Uh, sabi sa Ephesians, okay. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Sino mang taong wala kay Kristo ay isang patay. Spiritually. Yun yung kalagayan ng taong walang relasyon kay Kristo. It was described by Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, they were dead in their transgressions. But somewhere along the, law, the line, kinatagpo ka ng Panginoon na nampalataya ka sa Kanya. That's why, again, sabi rin ni Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and 5, But because of His great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive. Dati kang patay, binuhay ka ng Panginoon. In Christ. Pero hindi lang natapos doon. Hindi ka lang niyan uh, binuhay. Ang sabi ng Ephesians again in chapter 4 verse 14, We are not meant to remain as children at the mercy of every chance wind of teaching, but we are meant to grow in the way, in every way, into Christ. Gusto rin ng Panginoon na hindi ka lang mabuhay kundi lumago ka Because the ultimate goal is to be like Christ. Kaya nga, kung babalikan natin yung journey natin bilang mga Kristiyano, nung nagumpisa tayo mga wala pa kay Kristo, we're dead in Christ. Ibig sabihin, it is really a situation na kung saan parang wala kang kakayanan. Pero inabot ka ng Panginoon sa Kristo na mayaman sa biyaya at, at habag, kaya nakilala mo siya at binuhay kanyang bilang isang Kristiyano spiritually. But again, hindi niya gusto may saka sa buhay na naligtas ka lang. He wants you to move on, he wants you to grow. Kasi kung yun din lang talaga as I've said many many times, kung gusto lang ng Panginoon iligtas kanya, daling ka lang sa langit, di dapat no makilala kanya, kunin ka na rin niya para diretso ka na sa langit. Di ba? Na kung as I've said kung ganun din lang talagang plano ng Panginoon, dapat nung nagpabautismo ka, tinagalang ko na lang para diretso ka na sa langit. ba? Diba? Titingnan mo, mihinga pa ba yan? Diretso na. Pero hindi ganun ang plano ng Lord. Ang plano ng Lord, when He saved you, there is a purpose in saving you. So that as you grow, your life will reflect God's image, Christ's image, and you will continue to grow like Him. But the truth is, unfortunately, many, many times, marami Kristiyano, kahit tayo, are stuck in our Christian life. Bakit madala sumihinto na i-stuck tayo sa buhay Kristiyano? Let me give you tra- sa- uh, some reasons. The first reason is that many Christians are so self-satisfied that they thought, okay na akong ganito, basta kilala ko si Kristo, basta sigurado akong pupunta sa langit. Contento na sila sa ganung kalagayan. So we became Friday Christians. Hanggang doon lang, basta ako dumadalo ko ng church, okay na ako dyan. Mga kapatid, wala pa sa kalingkingan ng plano ng Lord na iniisip niya para sa'yo ang nakikita mo. If you, if you thought that you just, it's okay just to attend and without growing, marami kang namimiss sa buhay na nais ng Panginoon. Remember what Jesus Christ said, I have come to give you life, life in its fullness. Hindi mo nararanasan yung fullness because you are so satisfied. Doon ka na lang. Hanggang doon ka na lang. That's one reason why many Christians are stuck. Second reason is that yung maraming Kristiyano kaya medyo humihinto is that they experience in their Christian life some failures or maybe sins. Yung pag-aaralan nating talata ngayon was actually spoken by the Apostle Peter. At sino si Pedro? Kung pag-uusapan lang failure, mga kapatid, wala nang pinakamalaking failure sa buhay Kristiyano kundi si Pedro, si Peter. Remember? He's a very strong guy, very bold, kaya nga natutuwa sa kanya ang, 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 ang Panginoon sa Kristo. Eh. Kasi there was one time, tinanong siya ng Panginoon, Peter, do you know who am I? Who, who I am? And Peter said, Lord, ikaw ang anak ng Diyos. You are the son of the living, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. At ang sabi sa kanya ng Panginoon, you are blessed, Peter, because hindi yan sinabi sa inyo ng kahit na sino, kundi God my Father revealed it to you. Tuwan-tuwa si, 
tuwan-tuwa ang Panginoon sa Kristo sa kanya sapagkat alam ni Peter kung sino siya. There was a time na kusaan pinakita ni Peter na kusaan ay napakatapang niya na sumunod kay Kristo. Ang sabi niya, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. At kung sino man ang gagawa sa iyo, sabagat there was a time na naghahayag ang Panginoon ng mangyayari sa buhay niya, sabi ni Peter, Lord, di ko papayagan yan. Kasi sabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo, huhulihin ako, papako ako at pahirapan ako at tatalikuran niyo ako. And Peter said, I'll not allow you to, to experience that, Lord. Hindi pa pwede yan. That's why nung hinuhuli minsan ng Panginoon sa Kristo, kumuha siya ng tabak, tinaga niya isang sundalo, putol yung tenga. At ang sabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo, not in that way, Peter. So napakatapang ni Peter. Pero alam natin, his life is up and down. There was a time na kusahan, sinabi niya, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Pero at one point in time, tinawag siya naman ng Panginoon sa Kristo, get thee behind me, Satan. At ang worst is that, nung sabi ni Peter, Lord, I'll not do that to you. And Jesus said, look at his eyes, sabi, no, Peter, sa pagtilaok ng manok, you're going to deny me three times. And so it happened. Nung nandun siya, hinuli ang Panginoon sa Kristo, lahat sila nawala, but Peter followed the Lord Jesus Christ, tinitignan ko sino man, kung anong gagawin kay Kristo, pero somebody was able to recognize Peter. Nung sabi sa kanya, di ba ikaw yung alagad niya? Ay hindi, hindi ko alagad, hindi ko, hindi ko kilala yan. Ano ba pangalan niya? Je- Jeju? Hindi, hindi kinilala ng, ng, ni Pedro ang Panginoon sa Kristo. And it so happened that the, again, natupad yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo. Sa pagtilawak ng Pangin, pa, ano, Peter will deny him. And so Peter experienced that, 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 that tremendous failure in life that he almost gave up. Iniwan niya ng lahat. Minsan, gandin tayo. May mga Kristiyano na ayaw nang magpatuloy because uh, somewhere along the line, they failed and they failed in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because of sin. We backslide due to failure. Lagi din lang naman magkakasala. Di tuluyang ko na. Tumalikod na lang ako. Some Christian also are stuck in their Christian life when it comes to suffering. Kapag dumarana sila ng pagsubok sa buhay ng hirap, they start to stop and be stuck. Kapag medyo nauusig ka na sa pananampalataya mo at medyo sumunod ka sa Panginoon, nakita ng magulang mo, hindi dapat, at nagkaroon kayo ng argument at itatakwil ka na dahil sa pananampalataya mo, somehow you're forced to stop and to be stuck. No. Madalam niyo po, When Peter wrote our passage this afternoon, he wrote it to Christians who are being persecuted. Anong klase ng persecution meron sila noong unang panahon? Magugulat kayo. Malayong malayo sa hirap at suffering ng Kristiyano ngayon. Because before, when Christians are suffering, katulad ni Nero, pag medyo may party, nalulungkot siya, uh, may party tayo mamayang gabi at medyo gusto ko masaya yung okasyon. Pakikuha ko na mga isang daang kristyano at pakisilaban sila para may, may ilaw tayo. Ganon yung suffering nila mga kapatid. Tinutuhog sila ng buhay. Pinapakain sa liyon. Sinusunog. Pero today's Christians, ay, ano ba to? Walang signal yung internet. Nakakabisi. Yung mga suffering natin, ang layo. Ano ba naman si Lord? Kala ko, susustain niya kung ba't ako nawala ng trabaho. Ang babaw nung, nung ating mga suffering compared to the early Christians. That's why many Christians are stuck in their Christian life. Humihinto tayo, self-satisfied, we sin, or we suffer. Yun yung mga common reasons why Christians are stuck in their Christian life. Kaya naman, mga kapatid ng katotohanan, it is possible to grow old but not growing up. Hello? Naniniwala po ba tayo? It is possible that we grow old but not grow up. 
Posible yan. At sa maraming pagkakataon nangyayari yan. Because we fail to grow. And some are struggling when changes are happening in their lives. Kapag sinabi na ng Panginoon, ganito ang gawin mo, anak. That really determines whether they're going to grow or they're going to be stuck. Are they going to follow or obey or not? Minsan mahirap magbago. Kaya sabi natin, growth is painful because change is painful. But nothing is as painful as stuck somewhere you don't belong. Ang pinakamasakit sa nabagay mga kapatid, yung may stuck ka sa isang kalagayan na hindi ka naman dapat manatili. Why? Because the pressure and the message to you is that you are not meeting your potential and you're not maximized, nasa sayang yung buhay mo. You're stuck in a situation na hindi ka naman dapat. Mas masakit daw yun kaysa sa, sa dala ng pagbabago na gusto ng Panginoon Diyos. Ang tanong, kung meron kaya tayong spiritual Facebook at titignan, titignan ng Lord ang status mo, ano kayang nakalagay? Are you moving on or are you stuck in your Christian life? Diba? Madalas yun ang gusto natin tingnan kagad. Sino ba tong taong to? At makikita natin sa kanyang status. Married. Single and ready to mingle. Diba? Nilalagay na iba yan eh. O kaya iba naman, complicated. Yan. Ang tatapang ng iba no? sa, sa Facebook, nilalagay yung status nila. Complicated. Into a relationship, complicated. Alam mo na. Diba? Kung meron tayong spiritual Facebook, ano kayang status natin as far as God is concerned? As are we moving on or are we stuck? If you're a Christian, 5 to 10 years or maybe 20 years, wala ka pa ring sinasamahang G-group and you're not involved, you do not even know the names ng iyong mga kapatid, you're stuck. Sapagkat ang design ng Lord is really that you grow Not just in his relationship with you, but also in your relationship with your brothers and sisters. Kung sa tagal ng panahon, madali ka pa rin masaktan. Pag may nasabi lang, nasasaling ka, you're not growing old. Kung ganun pa rin ang paraan ng pagsasalita mo, you're stuck. Katulad din ng dati. Kung insecure ka pa rin nakikita mo, naingit ka pa rin sa mga kapatid na merong mas maayos na trabaho, at merong pambili ng whitening lotion at wala ka. I think you're not growing. If you're so complaining and unforgiving, I think you're not growing. You're stuck. Pwedeng umaatin ka ng church, tataas ka ng kamay, umaawit ka pa, but doesn't mean that you're growing. Again, maraming tao ang Sunday Christian or Friday Christians. Yes, they are attending, but they're stuck. They're not growing in the relationship with the Lord. In fact, kahit nga sa church natin, meron. Pwedeng nadadala ka lang, nahype ka lang, tataas ka ng kamay, ang ganda ng song. But you're not growing in the Lord. Ay, hey, pastor, sincere naman ako sa sinasabi ko. Yes, you can be sincere. But many people can be, are sincerely wrong. Pwede sincere ka sa ginagawa mo, but you're not growing. Kasi yung mga kulto, mga kapatid, sincere sila. Sincere sila sa ginagawa nila, but they're wrong. So you need to know, kumusta na ba ako? Because the greatest evidence that you can be growing is a changed life. Ang totoong ebidensya at, at at patunay na lumalago ka sa Panginoon, yung buhay pa rin ko nagbabago. Nakikita ba ng parents mo sa'yo yung pagbabago? Kasi baka naging born again ka lang sa pangalan, pero yung change life, wala pa. Nagdagdag ka lang ng bagong reliyon. So I'm telling this to us, to ourselves, is because we need to be true and honest before the Lord. Are we growing in our faith in Him. Because it is God's desire that we move on in our relationship with Him and grow in our faith. That's why sabi ni Peter, 2 Peter 3.18, 
but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Malinaw yan. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Kung merong gustong lumago, mga kapatid, sa buhay na ito, ang Diyos yun. He doesn't want us to be stuck. He wants us to reach the maximum potential of the fullness of life that God would like us to experience. So, that, ang tanong, how can we grow and move on in our faith? Paano ba? Let me, again, share to us that we need a growing faith. Last Friday, we talked about a confident faith. This time, we're going to talk about a growing faith. And I entitled God's message this afternoon as Let Faith Arise. Let Faith Arise. May I invite you to please stand with me and read this passage. Two short verses. Let's read it loud. First Peter chapter 2, 1 and 2. Ready? Begin. Therefore, read yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Purihin po ang Panginoon, makapupo tayong lahat. So we have a simple and yet practical and truthful message this afternoon. Paano ba tayo lalago sa ating pananampalataya? Two things. First, kung gusto mong lumago, there must be what we call a spiritual cleansing. Pakisabi po natin cleansing. Ba? Kung gusto mong gumanda sa gabi, you're doing cleansing. Yeah. There must be a cleansing, spiritual cleansing. Let's go to our passage. Sabi ng unang talata ang binasa natin kanina, nagumpisa sa salitang therefore. Pag nakita natin yung salitang therefore, we need to see what is there before. Meron siyang nasa unahan na sinasabi at sinusundan niya lang. So ano ba yung sinasabi? Because we are in the chapter 2, in the chapter 1, it says, verse 21. It should be chapter 1, verse 23. Since you have been born again, sabi ni Peter, dahil na born again ka na. Diretso yan. Since you have been born again. Ano ba yung born again na yan? The born again is the rebirth. Muling kapanganakan. Distinguished from the first birth. Ano yung first birth natin? Nung pinanganak tayo ng nanay natin, merong pangalawang kapanganakan, which is actually spiritual birth. Okay? The born again experience is a spiritual heavenly birth resulting to our being spiritually alive. Dati tayong patay, binuhay tayo ng Panginoon. That's rebirth. So, sino mang tao na wala kay Kristo ay patay? Uulitin ko lang. Lumalakad dyan physically but spiritually patay. Walang ugnayan sa Diyos. Kapag patay ka, ang sinasabi ng Bible, when God created us, or the first man and woman, they committed a sin. Every person who is dead has a, what we call, the seed of Adam and Eve. Ano yung seed na yun? The original sin. Yung kasalanan nila ay dumaloy sa atin, kaya tayo rin ay patay. Okay? Ibig sabihin, Our nature as a person, as a human being, is sinful. Nasa atin yung sinful nature, kaya nga, kahit yung bata, napansin nyo ba? Ako excited ako makita sa mga anak natin eh. Yung mga naglalaki yan. Makita nyo, ang saya-saya. Pinanganak yan ng mga magulang, kayo, bilang mag-asawa, wala pa naman kayong tinuturo. But, have you not wondered why mga ilang buwan lang at pumasok sa isang taon, nang babatok na sila. O kaya, nakikipag-agawa na ng bagay. It is the nature of a child to, to be envious. Nasa kanya yung sinful nature. Hindi mo kinakailangan turuan maingit siya, maiingit siya. Hindi mo kailangan turuan sa kanya na maging masama ugali niya, meron siyang masama ugali. Kasi meron siyang sinful nature na naman na. Hindi nyo kailangan turuan ng bata sa ganyan, mga kapatid. Kaya nga ako excited pag tinitignan ko yung mga bata. Yung makita mo talaga, kung sino, minsan talaga meron siyang mga hablo to. Ah, talaga ang lakas kumapit. Hindi bibitawan yung gusto niya. Aagawin niya doon sa, sa kaibigan niya. Iiyak naman yung isa. 
Darating naman yung siya, tagapagtanggol, bapatukan yung siya, pak! Ang saya-sayaw ng mga bata pag nagsama. Saan nang galing yan? Tinuro ba ng magulang yan? Hindi, mga magulang tagaawat eh. Tagapagpaliwanag, hindi ganyan, hindi tama yung ganyan. Kasi nature ng bata yan na mana yung ating sinful nature. Kaya kinakailangan ng rebirth, ng pagiging born again. Kailangan muli silang ipanganak sapagkat namana nila yung kasalanan na minana natin kay Adan at Eva. Three years old, makikita mo mga kapatid, hindi mo kailangan turong magsinungaling, magsisinungaling. Amazing. Di ba? Sino nagturo nun? Maliban na lang pag sinasabi mo sa anak, nandiyan na yung naniningil sa akin, nasabihin mo wala ako. Ah, talaga, matututunan nila yan. Pero hindi, wala naman kayo tinuturo, natututo sila magsinungaling. Hindi mo kailangan turo ang maging selfish, selfish na sila. Meron na sila, ayaw pambitawan. Nangaagaw pa ng iba. Nature ng bata yan mga kapatid because they have the original sin. Kaya nga, we, they need the new birth which is actually spiritual, heavenly birth resulting to our being spiritually alive. Itong muling kapanganakan mga kapatid, malinaw ang sabi ni Peter. Born again is being born from above. Okay? Sabi ni Peter, Since you are being, you are already born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable. Na hindi isang, isang uh, seed na nasisira, kundi isang seed na hindi nasisira. Ano yun? Yung salita ng Diyos. Malinaw po sa sinabi ni Peter. Nung maging born again ka, natanaman, natanaman ka ng salita ng Diyos, na tinanggap mo ng pananampalataya at umusbong at nabuhay sa iyo, nagkaroon ka ng bagong pagkatao. Alright? Ano tong bagong pagkatao? Kaya sabi uli, binugtungan ni, ni, ni John, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him. Inulit ha? God's seed abides in him. Kaya daw ang Kristiyano, ang tutong na born again, hindi na siya magpapatuloy sa kasalanan sapagkat nasa kanya ang seed na binigay ng Diyos. Pastor, ibig sabihin ba yan? Hindi ka na magkakasala. Hindi po yun ang sabi, mga kapatid. Ang sabi, they will not continue to sin. Hindi niya na practice at hindi niya na intensyon at hindi niya na kasiyahan ang magkasala. Nung hindi ka pa kristyano, wala kang pakialam kung ano yung ginagawa mo. Magmura ka, okay lang. Di ba? Maging makasarili ka, magnasa ka, okay lang. Pero suddenly, when you became a Christian, nagbago lahat. Yung dating sistema ng buhay mo, ayaw mo na. Nasasaktan na ang nasa loob pag ginagawa mo yung dati mong pamumuhay. Meron ang nagsasabing hindi tama yan. Why? Because you are already a born again Christian. Nasa iyo na yung seed. Nasa iyo na yung kunla. Okay? Maging malinaw po tayo dun mga kapatid. Dinugtungan din huyan ni Pastor Pablo, Anyone is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Ulitin ko po, hindi sinabi ni Juan na hindi na magkakasala. Pero this time, ayaw mo na magpatuloy sa kasalanan at nasasaktan na, nasasaktan na yung nasa loob mo which is actually the Holy Spirit who is grieved whenever you commit sin. Kaya nga madaling malaman kung kristyano ka hindi. Kapag nagawa mo yung kasalanan at walang nasaktan sa iyo, magtanong ka na, kristyano ba ako? Kasi kapag gumawa ka ng kasalanan, nasa yung banal na Espiritu, meron kang mararamdaman na hindi tama at masakit. Ayaw niya nung kasalanan. Seed will always determine the fruit. Wala hong nagtanim ng kamatis na umasa na meron siyang anihing mangga. Di po ba? So kung tinanim sa atin ay buhay mula sa salita ng Diyos, ang lalabas diyan dapat buhay din ng Diyos. Maayos na buhay. For God's seed, malinaw yung sabi ni Peter, for God's seed abide in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Kaya ang mahalaga rito ang tanong dito, kaya mo lang na magbago, kaya mo lang makawala sa nakalipas kung muli kang ipinanganak and you have been born again. Because you were planted a seed 
that seed will enable you to overcome your old life. Ang mahalaga lang, ang tanong, are you really born again? Pwede mo bang pakitanong sa katabi mo, born again ka ba talaga, kapatid? Born again ka ba talaga? It is not by nine title. Uy, yung mga born again doon. Hindi ho. Ang born again, karanasan sa Diyos na kusang pinanganak kang muli. It is not a name or a title. It is an experience of God putting you into a rebirth, making you alive again. Kasi hindi mo kakayanin yung pinagagawa dito kapag hindi ka born again. Sa totoo lang. Yung iba, nasasaktan pa. Yung kapitbahay ko, araw-araw akong iniinis. Kasi pag nagsalita, ganung ganito Mga kapatid, huwag ka na mainis. Kasi ang taong wala sa Diyos, natural nilang buhay yun. Don't expect something from people na hindi naman nila capable gawin. Dahil wala sila nun. Ang sinasabi rito, yung may kakayanang gumawa nito, yung mga taong meron ng Espiritu ng Diyos. At ang sabi, kaya dinugtong ni Pedro, Therefore, since you are born again, read yourselves. Okay? Linisin yung sarili nyo ng mga bagay na ito. Read yourselves. It is a command. Hindi o option yan mga kapatid. Bakit nga inutusan ni Pedro, alisin nyo to? It's because you have the capacity since you are born again. So do not expect it from, not, from people who are not born again. Huwag mo sila yan tulad sa'yo. Okay? Baka mamaya nag-expect ka, katulad ng pag-expect mo sa born again, hindi mo mamimit yan, maprostrate ka lang. So, ano yung pinalis ni Peter sa, sa atin? Una, anong sabi? Malice. Read yourselves of malice. Malice is a desire to cause pain, hurt, or distress to someone. Sa Tagalog natin, alam natin yan, malicia. Ano yung malicia? Pag naglagay ka ng, ins- ng, ng, ng ano ba ta- insinuation sa isang bagay, sa isang tao, that's, that's malice. Ah, kaya lang naman babayit siya. Sa iyo, utangan ka niyan eh. Naglalagay ka na ng malis. Kaya malapit siya ngayon. Kaya ang bait niya sa iyo, utangan ka niyan. Naglalagay ka ng malis doon sa ginagawa ng isang tao. Ang sabi ni Peter, kung born again ka na, do not, it is not, should, and it should not be your practice to put malis to someone in their actions, in their words. Secondly, okay, Anong sabi yung pinatatanggal? Ikalawa? Deceit. Pakisabi po natin, deceit. Okay. Hindi receipt. Deceit. Okay? Deceit. Pandaraya. A desire to take advantage on someone by cheating, concealment, or deception. Okay? It is a desire na saan mandaya ka sa magitan ng pagtatago, ng katotohanan. Pandaraya. Para bang yung isang lalaki naglalakad, nakakita siya ng bulag. So naglagay siya. Pagkatapos, nung mali siya, tinig niya, paglingon niya, yung bulag, nagtaas ng salamin, sinilip yung nilagay niya. Binalikan niya. Kala ko ba bulag ka? E pa't sinisilip mo yung nilaglag ko? Ay sir, hindi po ako bulag. Hindi po ako regular na na pulubi. Pinalitan ko lang yung nandito. Ha? Eh nasan yung bulag na regular na nandito? Eh sir, day off niya po, nanunod ng sini. Tindi no? Merong mag day off yung bulag. Pandaraya. Ano po? Pandaraya. That should not be a practice of any person who is born again. Sabi. Ikatlo, ito, masakit. Hypocrisy. It is a desire to be known for what really isn't. A desire to be known for what really isn't. Ibig sabihin, ang favorite mong song, of course, The Great Pretender. Diba? Sabi nung kata, oh yes, I'm the great pretender. Just laughing and gay like a clown. Tumatawa daw, pero katulad ng clown. I seem to be what I'm not. I'm ready in my heart like a crown pretending that you're still around. Ah, ano pala yun? Hugot pala na isang taong nasaktan yun. Ah, 
nagpre na parang okay lang, kahit sa totoo lang, dumurugo yung puso niya dahil iniwan siya. Yeah? Marami sa atin minsan are guilty of this. We pretend as something that we're not. No, a Christian should not live this kind of life. Pang-apat, ano yung pinali sa atin? Envy. Alright? Yan. Ito na, mabigat to. Envy is a desire to acquire something which others have but you don't. Alam natin yan, mga kapatid. It's a common sin na ginagamit ng kaaway para mabiktima tayo. Okay? You, ha- you want something that you don't have but others have. Na? Para ba isang kwento tungkol sa isang alamat lang? Merong isang ermitanyo. Alam niyo ermitanyo, yung mga nagtatago sa kweba, sa bundok, mahaba, balbas, yung nabubuhay sa malayo, mag lang sila. So, yung kwento is that, minsan, dinalaw daw ni Satanas, nakita niya yung ermitanyo, pinagtutulungan ng mga kapwa niya, demonyo, tuksuhin. Na magalit man lang, matukso sa kasalanan. So, sabi ni Satanas, oh, saan kay galing? Eh, pinagtutulungan namin tong ermitanyo na matukso natin, ma- mawala yung kanyang Uh, focus dun sa kanyang pagiging uh, banal. So, ano nang ginawa nyo? Sabi nung isa, ay, siyempre, pinakitaan natin, tinukso natin sila, siya ng babae, kinentuhan natin kung paano uh, yung dapat na ma-enjoy niya sa buhay na ito. Ay, isa, ikaw, ano nang ginawa mo? At tinukso natin siya na dapat matako siya dahil nag-iisa siya rito. Yung isa naman, tinukso ko siya na magkaroon siya ng doubt sa buhay niya na walang mangyayari sa kanya sa masusunod na hinaharap niya kundi mamamatay lang siya mag-isa. Ang sabi nung ni Satanas sa akin, napakarod nyo naman. Hayaan nyo ko. Dumapit siya. Si Satanas do sermitan nyo. Bumulong lang. Alam mo ba yung kapatid mo ngayon ay bishop na ng isang simbahan doon sa siyudad. Bigla hong nagbago yung aura nung ermitan nyo. Pumasok yung galit at inggit. Kasi yung kapatid niya daw, mas matas ng pwesto sa kanya. Nakita nila kung paano mabiktima isang taong katulad nito sa pagitan ng inggit. Mga kapatid, envy is a common sin that Satan is using to victimize us. When we see somebody who's progressing, when we see somebody possessing something, may tawag pa nga yung iba dyan, eh, holy envy. Wow. Nagiging holy envy pa. Ang inggit, inggit. Ingit pa rin yan. Envy is a sin. When you try and desire something that you don't have, and you'll do anything to get it, that's a sin. And Peter is saying, do not commit that sin. Get rid of that. Lastly, the word slander. Pagsabi po natin slander. Anong slander? In other terms, accuser. Accuser, a desire to falsely accuse in order to damage the reputation of someone. Okay? Si Satanas, mga kapatid, ang masakit, isang title ni Satanas is Accuser of the Brethren. Pagdating ng pagwawakas ng mundo, si Satanas, ang pinakatrabaho niya lang is to accuse the Christians or people of their sins. Yun lang trabaho niya. Pero minsan, yung trabaho niya, tinatrabaho rin ng mga tao. Kahit na mga Kristiyano. We accuse somebody of something that is not true, but we would like to damage their reputation. People who are not born again should not live that kind of life. Get rid of these things. If you're not in Christ, this is common to you. Kung wala ka kay Kristo at hindi ka born again, natural lang yan. Normal lang yan. Pero kung ikaw yung nakay Kristo, sabi ni Peter, get rid of that. Alisin mo yan, hindi bagay sa iyo yan. Hindi bagay sa iyo yan. Bilang Kristiyano, hindi bagay sa iyo yan. Nakakita ho ba kayo? I don't know. Uh, nakakatuwa lang, no? Pag inobserbahan mo, yung mga, mga may edad na, na uh, gusto pa rin pumorma na parang uh, jolog sila, yung bang magsusot ng damit, yung isa nakalabas, yung isa nakapasok, at medyo magpapamada ng karate. No? <laughs> at, at ang suot eh, para talagang, para talagang millennial siya. Nakakatuwa, pero minsan nakakainis. Bakit? Kasi hindi bagay sa edad. Di po ba? 
Hindi bagay sa edad eh. Pumuporma kang parang geologs ka pa rin, pero 65 years old ka na. Ang, 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 ang sagawa ng tignan eh. Diba? Hindi bagay kasi kaya pumapangit. May bagay sa edad mo, itong, itong damit mo, o pwede kang medyo mag, mag, medyo mag-adventure ng konti, pero yung, pero yung agwat naman, napakalayo, makikita ng tao hindi bagay. Mga kapatid, yung mga attitude at buhay na ito, hindi na rin bagay sa atin bilang born again. Amen po ba? Okay, sabi sa katabi mo, hindi na bagay sa iyo yun, kapatid. Hindi na bagay sa iyo. Okay? Hindi na pwede kasi magsama yung tubig at langis. Napansin niyo ba? Pag pinagsama niya yung tubig at langis, naghihiwalay, hindi sila pwede magsama. Ganon din po, yung buhay kristyano, hindi na pwede magsama yung spirito ng Diyos and yet nandun pa rin yung mga bagay na ito. We need to outgrow them and get rid of them. I don't know, pero nasubukan niyo po ba na may paborito kang damit? Okay? Yung shirt na talagang favorite mo, uh, tapos nasuot mo na, tapos nilagay mo sa damitan, sa labahan, Eh pero may lakad ka na naman at gusto mo yung bagay uli sa forma mo yun, binabalikan mo, inalungkat mo kahit 3 days na, 5 days. Diba? Kahit tambak na, uh, ganyang karami na yung tambak, hahanapin mo pa rin siya. Kasi yun lang yung bagay sa forma mo eh. Dun sa, lalo na kung naka, nakachaleko ka o kung naka, uh, ano ka eh. Eh yung panlo, bagay na bagay, binik eh. Diba? May ginagawa, minsan ginagawa natin yan eh. Kahit na, hindi okay lang, kahit 3, 5 days na yun, yung amoy nun, okay lang eh. Di ba? Pero, hindi baga. Kumaga sa ano, may amoy pa rin. Hindi na dapat. Sinusuot pa rin natin yung dating suot natin. Yun lang sinasabi ni Peter. Kaya nga, sinunda ni Pablo yan, sabi ni Pablo, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly love, clothe yourselves. May bago ka ng damit. Ano yun? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Huwag mo na isuot yung dati mong damit. Luma na yun eh. May bago ka ng damit na dapat isuot. At sabi ni Pablo, yun ang isuot natin ngayon. Kaya sabi ni Peter, get rid of those, yung luma mong damit. Magpalit ka naman ng damit. Kalimutan mo na yung mga luma, yung mga mabaho. Pwede bang pakitanong yung katabi mo, bago ba damit mo, kapatid? Bago ba damit mo? I'm talking about spiritual dress. Okay? Baka kailangan mo maglaba. Madali lang po alisin ito mga kapatid. Kung, eto na, meron tayong pangalawang bagay. You want to grow, you need spiritual cleansing, but also spiritual cravings. Craving, spiritual craving. Let's go to the verse 2. Sabi ng talatang dalawa, like newborn babies. Like newborn babies. Again, para lang magising yung katabi nyo. Mukha bang baby yung katabi nyo? Pakitingnan. Baby face pa ba yan? Ayan. Like newborn babies. It talks about, sabi ni Peter, maging katulad kayo ng mga babies. So, yung sinasabi niya rito, hindi lang para sa bagong kristyano. This is applicable kahit matagal ka ng kristyano. Ang gusto niya sabihin, maging katulad kayo ng mga babies. Kahit matagal ka ng kristyano, why? He's talking about babies who are spiritually hungry. Who are craving. Maging katulad kayo ng mga babies na uhaw na uhaw, gutom na gutom. Okay, marami ho tayo nurses dito, lalo na mga nasa Nico, di ba? How many times yung bata kumakain sa isang araw, yung bagong kapanganakan? Bagong panganak. Sige nga, nurses. Every three hours, hindi every two hours. Ilang beses sa isang araw? Napansin nyo ba? Nabibilang nyo? Eight. Tama. Eight to twelve ba ang sabi ng iba? Yung bata kumakain eight to twelve times. Can you imagine? Kung ganun pa rin pagkain natin kahit adult na tayo, eight to twelve times, anong klase yata ang katawan meron tayo ngayon? Di ba? Pero yung bata, gutom na gutom pag lumabas. They have to be fed 2 to 3 hours, 8 to 12 times a day. 
Bakit sinabi ni Peter, maging katulad kayo ng newborn babies, uhaw na uhaw? Mga kapatid, you cannot avoid the five negatives, mali, slander, kapag hindi ka uhaw sa sinasabi ni Peter. Like newborn babies, maging uhaw ka, maging gutom ka. So ito yung posture natin bilang Kristiyano, kahit matagal ka na, dapat huwag mananatili o huwag mawala sa iyo yung pagiging uhaw at gutom saan? Sa salita ng Diyos. Do you still have the longing for God? Uhaw ka pa ba sa Diyos? Minsan kaya tayo na-stuck, balikan nyo lang. Check lang natin puso natin. Are you still longing for God? O may ibang, may ibang longing ka na? Mga kapatid, this is the real truth. One of the measure, whether you are still right with the Lord in your relationship and you're in line with your relationship with the Lord, meron ka pa bang desire sa Kanya, may longing? Hinahanap mo pa ba siya? Kasi pag wala na, you are in a critical condition. Because a true Christian will always be like new babies, longing for God. I've shared to you one time, one of my favorite subjects, kahit no seminary kami, zoology. Zoology is the study of animals. And one of the most beautiful study that I made, research, is about deers. At one time in my devotion, God spoke to me like this. It was captured by David, the kind of longing that we should have to be like the longing of a deer. Sabi niya sa Psalm 42, As the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. Bakit sinabi ni David, kung paano ang isang usa ay nauuwaw sa iyo, Diyos, ang kaluluwa ko ay nauuwaw sa iyo? Because when you study the life of a deer, yung mga usa, mga kapatid, sila yung mga hayop na kusaan may harin din sila, may karian din sila. May mga ilang asawa, may maraming anak. Pero daily, they will be challenged by yun, young, new generation, strong, na mak- makuha yung karian nila. Kaya nga nakita nyo, nagsusungayan sila. Naglalaban sila, mga kapatid. Sina-challenge sila about their harem. And most of the time, they will face challenges from young, strong deers. Maglalaban yan. Kapag hindi nila paglabanan yon, naging matatag sila, they will lose their harem or their kingdom. Kaya naman ang buhay daw ng isa is always a journey, always a challenge, always a struggle. Sa sobrang pagod nila sa pag, pangipaglaban at sa pag-aasikaso doon sa kalangkarian, mga kapatid, there will always be a time that they will get tired, napapagod sila, and they're longing for something that will satisfy their tears. Ano yon? The streams of water. Hahanap sila ng isang tubigan na umaagos, na kung saan pag uminom sila, damang-dama nila yung satisfaction because of what they have gone through sa kanilang journey, sa pagtatanggol sa kanilang buhay. Si David, kinumpere niya yung buhay ng Kristiyano sa deer that's in a journey at minsan napapagod. But the only thing that can satisfy is the stream of water from God. Mga kapatid, We are in a journey in our Christian life. And the only thing that can satisfy us is God and His Word alone. That's why sabi ni David, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. Kung paano nauuhaw ang isang usa sa tubig, ganun din ako ang nauuhaw sa iyo, Panginoon. Sinundan niya pa sa verse 2. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? So ang tanong, Do you still have the longing, the craving, the desire for God? Sometimes, we're so focused in our longing to earn, to work, so that we can have it. We fail to realize that what will satisfy us is first and foremost, our God. We are in a journey. What will satisfy your craving are not these things. That's why I shared to you some months ago about all that matters in life. 
Ano ba mahalaga sa buhay talaga? Yes, as you've gone through this life, you've worked hard after this, so what? Sabi ni Solomon, I conclude this thing, that the end of man, the chief end of, end of man, is to glorify God, fear God, and obey His commandments. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to have that longing just like the deer. A longing for God and His Word. Ulitin ko lang. Sabi ni Peter, crave for pure spiritual milk like newborn babies. Milk is the basic food in their society before, especially for babies. Okay? Kaya ginamit mo di Peter yan. Pero describe niya yung milk niya, it's pure. Why pure? It is in contrast of the five things that he wants us to get rid of. Malice, slander, envy, hypocrisy. Because anything that is impure, anything that is, uh, uh, that is contaminated milk, definitely will hurt and will give you sickness. Kaya sabi ni Peter, crave for pure and spiritual. Why spiritual? In the Greek word, it is logikos. Yun po ibig sabihin ng spiritual. Logikos. Ang ibig sabihin logical. Hindi siya talaga spiritual na parang hindi physical, kundi ang ibig niya sabihin reasonable. Bakit reasonable? Ang sinasabi ni Peter is this. You can only grow, kung nga intention to grow, if you drink pure, spiritual, rational or reasonable milk. You have to long for that. You have to get it from the Word of God. You have to study His Word. You have to read. Eh, Pastor, ang hirap niyan. Pag umaga, takbo na kagad ako sa trabaho. That's why. Nasa ng longing mo? Kasi kapag meron kang gustong gawin, alam na natin yan. Pag gusto, may paraan. Pag ayaw, may dahilan. No, you can play it in the music, in your or verse sa inyong kotse, habang nasa trabaho, makinig ka lang ng, ng pagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos. You can do it anytime. Kapag gusto natin. Why? Kasi alam ng Panginoon, you will never grow without reading His Word, without really considering His Word. So ang tanong, are you still longing for that? Ay, Pastor, gustong gusto ko pero nawawala yung desire ko kasi pag galing sa trabaho, pagod na pagod na ako. Pag binasa ko yung talata, pastor, parang parang isang talata pa lang na ipaglaban ako kay Satanas. Sinasabi ko, inaantok ako, Lord. Ang sarap na salita mo, pampaantok talaga. At totoo naman yan, di ba? Nakaka- Napasin niyo ba pag nagbabasa ka ng Bible? Inaantok ka? Eh kasi gusto nga ni Satanas na antukin ka para hindi mo maunawaan, mabasa. Pero if you have that longing because your, your satisfaction will only come from God and His Word, then you should crave and you should, you should find a way. Ang purpose ni Peter, because you will grow up in your salvation if you have that longing. Just to end up, kilala natin si Job, di ba? Kilala po natin. Yung namatay na, may-ari ng apple, si Steve Job. Bihir <laughs> lang, parang magising lang tayo. Si Job, I'm sure to you, Job's life, lahat kinuha sa kanya. Anong dinadaanan mong hirap, mga kapatid? Wala yung sakalingkingan ni Job. Di ba? Namat- kinuha yung kalang kabuhayan, one day. Kinuha yung kanya mamahal sa buhay, ubus yung kanya mga anak. Ang mabigat, binigyan siya sakit, mula ulo hanggang paanan. Pigsa, hindi makaupo, hindi makahiga, pigsa. Lahat ng problema na kay Job. Kaya nga, anong sakit na meron tayo? Anong hirap na meron tayo? Eh kasi, nasa generation tayo ng milinya, konting ano, complain tayo. Eh si Job, ano naging sekreto ni Job? Pasigin niyo yung salita niya. Sabi ni Job, My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. Hindi ako tumalikod sa kanya. Hindi ako nalumiko. Sabi niya, I have not departed from the commands of His lips. I have treasured the words of His mouth more than my daily bread. Yun ang sekreto ni Job, mga kapatid. Yung salita ng Diyos, yun ang kanyang pinagbubulayan. 
pinagyaman niya yung salita ng Diyos. During that time na sinusubok siya, he hold on to the promise of God. In fact, sinubok niya makireason out kay, sa Diyos eh. Binalikan lang siya ng salita ng Diyos. Job, nasan ka nung lalangin ko ang langit at lupa? Naunawaan mo ba nung ibitin ko to sa aking mga kamay? Hindi na nakapalag si Job. Kasi alam ni Job yung salita ng Diyos. Pero pinagpala siya. Kaya nga, ano nag-resulta kay Job? But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Sa pagsubok niya sa akin, lalabas ako parang ginto. At totoo naman, when Job came out from the trials, he is just like a gold. Blessed, purified, prospered, doubly blessed. Why? Because of the Word of God, he grew in his faith through the Word of God. Mga kapatid, lahat tayo dito nagtatrabaho. Wala sa atin gustong maghirap. Gusto natin yumaman, sumagana, so that we can prepare for our future. But you know what? More than anything else, ang gusto ng Lord, lumago ka sa kanyang relasyon. Kasi pagdating ng panahon, pag dumating yung pagsubok katulad ni Job, hindi mo makakapitan yung yaman mo. Yung pinaghirapan mo sa isang iglap, pwede mo wala. Maubos. With due respect, isang sakit lang katapat niyan. Ubus lahat yan. Di po ba? What will you sustain you during those trials? Kaya gusto ng Lord, lumago ka sa pananampalataya mo so that when time comes, dumating man yung pagsubok, you will come forth as gold just like Job. Hindi ka mauga. You can move on in your faith because that is God's design for you. Yung mga tao sa paligid mo, mas lalong pagpapalain at bibilib na meron siyang taong pananampalataya sa Diyos ay nanatiling matapat regardless of the situation. Because anyway, may klilang buhay. Lahat tayo papunta rin doon. Pero how will you end this life? You need to grow in your faith. Let me end with this. Faith upholds a Christian under trials. That's the reason why God would like us to grow in our faith. Sa panahon ng pagsubok, what will sustain you is your faith in God. That no matter what happens, God is with you, God will never leave you nor forsake you. Manalangin po tayo. Hallelujah. Father, We thank you for your word, for reminding us this afternoon once more. While we do, and, and, and you yourself would like us to prosper, to progress, to advance in our career, in our work, in our finances. Panginoon, kung merong unang gustong pagpalain kami, ikaw po yun, O Diyos. Sapagkat di mo lang kami tinawag upang iligtas. Gusto mo, tinawag mo kami, Panginoon, upang maging kawangis kami ng Panginoon So Kristo. At pagpalain din ang ibang tao at maging pagpapala sa kalna. But that can only happen if we grow in our relationship with you. I pray right now, for those of us who are going through some testings, maybe in sickness, or maybe in our relationship, sa aming mahal sa buhay, or maybe sa aming ugnayan sa inyo, Father, I pray that you will strengthen our faith, that you will help us to grow, that you will restore our longing for your word, our longing for you. Because alam namin, Panginoon, as we grow in our faith in you, we can move on, stand firm, and really advance in our relationship with you. I pray right now, Father, as we end this service, Panginoon, wag mo lang kami hayaan na lumabas sa simbahang ito, sa lugar na ito, na nakikapakinig na yung salita. Help us, O oh God, to go back to that longing for you and for your word. Restore to us, O oh God, that desire to know you more and grow in our faith in you. I pray this, O oh God, with the utmost desire for us to experience your renewal by your grace. So we thank you to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless us all.
po, Pastor, sa napakagandang mensahe sa hapong ito. I hope na we can be challenged by the message today so that we can grow in our faith. Hindi po tayo maging stagnant kagaya po ng sabi po ni Pastor. Now, uh, let's continue our worship through giving. Basahin ko po ang talata mula sa pangalawang sulat ni Pablo sa taga-Korinto. Sabi po rito, tandaan nyo ito ang tandaan nyo ito, ang nagtatanim ng kakaunti ay aani ng kakaunti. At ang nagtatanim naman ng marami ay aani ng marami. Ang bawat isa ay dapat magbigay ayon sa sariling kasya. Huwag sa lo- maluwag sa loob at di napipilitan lamang. Sapagkat ang iniibig ng Diyos ay ang kusang nagbibigay ng may kagalakan. Dawagan ko po ang ating pong asa na collect po ating uh, arts and authority. Salamat ama, Lord, sa araw na ito, Lord, na kami nakingin na iyong mga salita, Lord. Salamat po sa mga nakakandas na salita. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po sa bawat salam nito, Lord, at sa mga bawat pagbigay po, Lord, at uh, sila po ipagpalahin nga ba, Lord, sa bawat buhay nila, Lord. Maraming maraming salamat po, Lord. Lord, naway kami lumabas po na may mga pagpapala rito, Lord, at ang magamit po namin ng mga salita sa bawat buhay namin at sa bawat salam nito, Lord, at sa bawat paglabas namin, na share po namin po sa bawat isa na nangangailangan. Lord, maraming salamat po sa blessing na to, Lord. Nawa po ay ito magamit po, po sa ikakalago po ng iglesia na to, Lord. Salamat po, Lord, at Lord, bless mo po po, bless mo po ito at maging pagpapala po. Maraming salamat po, ito po ang dalangin sa inyo po sa pangis mo. Thank you, Brother Joner and Sister Lisa. Uh, once again, in behalf of the Filipino Evangelical Church, I would like to welcome you to the Friday service. I hope na you you are blessed and uh, nawa ay maging patuloy po ang ating pong pananambahan sa lugar na ito. Meron po tayong isang uh, bagong bisita sa araw na ito. Si Sister Risa Di Mauan. We'll go on to our announcement. Serving uh, next week, presider will be Brother Robert Abad. Song leader will be also Sister Gigi. Touch and offering, Brother 
Brother Marvin and Sister Dina. Fellowship in Church Day is the Jahili G Group, and the Fellowship in Church next week will be the Al Suba G Group. Other announcement: our monthly prayer and worship celebration will be on March 25, 20, 25. Sorry, po, hindi po Uh, Marcanya G Group will be celebrating their, cele- uh, their uh, anniversary on March, on April, the next, April 20, April 26. Then we are inviting you to join us in our Resurrection Day service on, on April 21. Sa umaga po, 5.30 a.m. Sige po, uh, Pastor. Yeah, just to remind us, meron po tayong East, uh, sunrise service uh, April 21, that's Sunday. So if you're free, Uh, it starts at 5.30 and it ends at 7 or 7.30 in the morning. Para yung mga may pasok pa ay pwede rin pong makapasok. This is a uh, once a year experience na kung saan makasama po natin mag-worship lahat ng mga iba't ibang lahi dito sa church center sa Oasis. So kung gusto nyo pong uh, maranasan uli early in the morning to worship the Lord, it's wonderful that different languages, especially pagbabasa ng Biblia sa iba't ibang salita ng Diyos, Uh, sa iba't ibang uh, dialect ay ginagawa po yan. But also, our worship team will lead the praise and worship during the sunrise service. Alright? So, in-invite po namin kayo. Uh, wag din po kayo mawala. Sa last Friday, ang Marcania will be celebrating their anniversary also. So, they'll be doing some presentation. But this time, bago po tayo magwakas, meron po tayong mga ipapanalangin, especially may mga kapatid tayo who are, who's in need of our prayers. And we praise the Lord sa life ni Sister Jolly. Kasama pa rin po natin siya. Let's pray na talagang the Lord will continue to show favor upon her. Dahil uh, na-release na po yung insurance niya. Binigyan siya ng insurance ulit. So we praise the Lord for that. But we're running for time dahil uh, merong mga, mga changes sa company nila. Sana hindi mo na siya i-cancel sa visa para mabail niya pa rin yung uh, uh, medical service. Ano po. So, kaya panalangin po natin na talagang mapabilis yung processing at yung pag-attend sa kanya. Alright? And we praise the Lord. May mga kapatid po tayong tumutulong sa kanya, sa Tawam, particularly yung mga nag-work po natin kapatid sa Tawam, who's really doing everything para matulungan siya na mapabilis po yung process ng treatment sa kanya. So, we'll be praying for Sister Jolly. Ano po. And pag-pray-pray din natin, I think, si Ate B, Ate B is when is your operation? 18. Okay. Panalangin din po natin si Ate B. Okay. Uh, let's pray for sustenance sa kanya. Si Ate B is a living testimony of the grace of God. Dahil marami na siyang dinaan ng operasyon, bagamat siya ay kasama rin doon sa mga, uh, mga ginagawa doon sa, sa Tawam Hospital. So, let's pray for Ate B. Meron pa po ba na who's in need of a prayer para sa special, particularly yung mga may uh, case sa hospital? Wala na po ba? So, after this, we're going to share in our meal. Enjoy the fellowship. Tumayo po tayong lahat tayo. Ito yung magwaka sa panalangin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salamat, Lord. Because through your word, We are always reminded of your plan and design for us. Not just to be assured that we're going to your presence in heaven when we die. But even if we right now, maranasan po namin the fullness of that life that you would like us to experience. Sometimes, it's easy for us to ask whether this is the fullness of life that we're experiencing. Because we're going through some trials and testings from, with some sicknesses. Pero salamat sapagkat alam namin may plano ka sa mga bagay nito, Panginoon. 
at ang plano mo ay makikita lamang po namin ng malawak at malinaw if we'll see it in the eyes of faith kung ano po ang kalooban mo. Lord, we've learned it even last Friday that whether in success or in suffering, you have a plan, you have a purpose in every season of life. And so we come to you right now with a burden, especially for Sister Jolly. We ask right now, God, Panginoon, salamat sa pag-sustain mo sa kanyang buhay. Salamat sa ginawa mo, Panginoon, especially sa operation. Now that we're pursuing the treatment sa chemotherapy or sa radiation, we pray, Lord, na magiging maayos pong processing nito. I pray ikaw kumilos doon sa mga buhay ng mga tao ng nag-asikaso, that they'll have a spirit of consideration, that they will work and help our sister. Again, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we would like to lift her up to you right now. We would like to lift up this situation. Lord, hindi mo po siya dadalhin sa ganitong sitwasyon na wala kang naisipakita na kung saan ang pangalan may maluluhalhati. And so we pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you're going to strengthen her and use, O oh God, this treatment to heal her. So that for your glory, may taas po ang kaluwalatian mo, ang pangalan mo. Lord, ganun din po. We thank you for the life of Sister B. Salamat, Panginoon, sa buhay ni Ate B who has been faithful to you in serving you while also working here sa Tawam Hospital. Now that she'll be undergoing an operation, we ask for your strength, for your sustaining grace to be upon her. We ask, Lord God, that as you will it for your, for your healing, let it be, O God, according to your will. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nice din po namin siya itas sa inyo, Panginoon. Salamat sa buhay ng mga kapatid na ito. Na alam namin, Panginoon, na patuloy kang nagniningning sa pamagitan ng mga ginagawa mo sa kalang buhay. It's really a burden, O God, to see our sister going through this process. But we also rejoice knowing that through this suffering, Lord, alam po namin, kasama ka po nila, Panginoon, at meron kang ng plano na ginagawa at ipinakikita sa buhay ng mga kapatid na ito. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we'd like to lift them up to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And once more, we ask, let our healing God reach out, O God, and touch their bodies, O God, once more. Let your healing flow sa kalama buhay, Panginoon. At maluwalhati ka sa anumang gagawin mo, Panginoon, sa kalama buhay. Salamat po. Salamat, O Diyos. We expectant, O God, para sa inyong kaluwalatian, karangalan, kalu- kalooban ng mangyari sa buhay ng mga kapatid na ito. Sa pangalan ni Jesus. Lord, for each one of us who may be going through some difficulties right now, we thank you that you've taught us to grow in our faith more than to be released and to be free from these burdens and problems. Dahil alam namin, Panginoon, as we grow in our faith, even these burdens can be a stepping stone for your glory, O God, to be exalted. For us to shine for your glory. Panginoon, tulungan mo kami lumago sa, sa aming relasyon sa inyo, not to be stuck in our, in our growth, in our faith in you, because we want us to experience indeed that fullness of life. Salamat po. For those of us, O oh God, who are deciding for something, Lord, ikaw pong nakakalam ng mga bagay na ito, and according to your will, it will be done, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we go out from this place, as we go back to our own jobs, Panginoon, samahan niyo po kami Maging pagpapala kami, Panginoon, sa aming mga pinagtatrabuhan at sa mga kasama namin sa trabaho. Lord, let, you, let your name be exalted in our lives, in our works, wherever we go. Salamat po, Panginoon, because indeed we are serving a God who's faithful, true, and exalted. And let it happen continually, Panginoon, sa buhay namin, saan man kami dalhin ninyo, Panginoon. Salamat po. Maingat po namin binabalik sa inyo lahat ng papuri because again, You alone, our God, deserves all these things. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's see our victory song. Amen. So let's sing our victory song to our King of Kings and Lord of Lords.